I've just pressed play on my device. I've just pressed record. And I'm not afraid. Sorry, yeah. recording. Yeah. I didn't press play. That's a stupid <laughs> thing to do because that doesn't impress anybody. You know what I mean. Sir, ma'am, and any genetically engineered life forms that happen to be wandering by, there appears to be a new podcast in the download tubes. Welcome to the Fully Charged Podcast. Here are a few highlights of what to expect in this episode. Johnny reaffirms a fact. I'm pretty sure that they didn't sell the VR6 in the late 70s. Robert reshuffles his award cabinet. Yes. Oh, oh God. I mean, in terms of what's on display, it's off the scale. I mean, that is amazing. And Johnny uses Google. I can't remember what it is, but hang on, uh, let me Google it. Yes, we have poor sound bites this week. So please follow us on the socials and why not check out Johnny's drive in the BMW i8. On a very hot day. Ooh, nice. Open top car driving through beautiful countryside. It's just like a TV advert for cars, only better. Now, this podcast obviously isn't free to produce. In fact, it's quite expensive and time-consuming to produce. So now we feel is the right time to start having a couple of adverts on the show. So if your product or service has a decent, sustainable message, perhaps, and you'd like to reach out to us, please drop us a line at podcast at fullychargedshow.co.uk. Let's get on with this episode. Hello, welcome along for the ride, everybody. Yeah, this, this is, is um, another podcast. Now, look, before we go any further, I'm going to do my apologies of the week because there's otherwise we'll be here all day because it could take some time. Is the is the digital mailbox a little busy for the, for the apologies? <laughs> I mean, what's lovely is how gentle the corrections are. They're not like angry, like on the, the, all the comments on the most recent episode of Fully Charged about the te- when I drove the Tesla Model Three. Yeah, and I'd read the specs just before we set off, but then we had to find our way. It it was driving in Denmark, you know. It was confusing. It is hard when you first set off in a car and you you want to roll the cams and do your first impression. Do your first impressions. I do. I do. I I do sympathise, Robert. But you're really good because you have your little notebook. I I had it all on my phone and I'd read it before we set off. But then we had to go through a very narrow exit on the car park. That stressed me. Then follow <laughs> all the, through the roads and oh, it was yeah. anyway. So here's what I said. So the Tesla Model Three, I said, well, do you, uh, don't you have to have an intro music for this? Well, there, we're, oh yeah, here's oh, the, yeah. the sting for the apology of the week. Bobby's made a boo 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 a boo boo. Bobby's made a boo boo, and that just means one thing: it's guilt time, guilt time. Everyone's got to feel guilty. Oh yes, Bobby's made a boo boo, and that's all right. So there we go. <laughs> but um, so I said there were 12 cameras and there's actually eight on the Model 3. I said there were okay. 14 ultrasonic sensors. There's 12. Uh, but the really big one that annoyed everyone was, I didn't know about this. I've looked it up since and it's true. Um, Elon Musk is very denigrating about LiDAR because the Tesla Model 3 has radar, not LiDAR. So what you did is pretty much up-spec the car in all yeah, respects. In all respects. So in other words, Elon should be patting you on the back, really. Well, they, I, the the Tesla retweeted about it. That actually, Tesla tweeted about that episode, so Ooh. they didn't mind. Yeah, it's the, it's the only time we've ever had a tweet from Tesla, the official Tesla Twitter stream thing. Just put so, it down to sheer excitement. I was you very were, excited. You I, were excited. It, it felt like there were 14 ultrasonic sensors and there were there were 12 cameras, but there's only eight. And it's not ra- it's radar. There's radar at the front. So they they um they most a lot of cars use lidar for yeah. their, you know, cruise control controlling stuff, but the Tesla uses radar. 
Oh, uh, okay, okay. So I've got it all wrong. But the but my favourite one, my favourite apology of the week this week is... Bob is made of boo, 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 a boo, boo. Bob is made of boo, boo, and that just means one thing. It's guilt time, guilt time. Everyone's got to feel guilty. Oh, yes, Bob is made of boo, boo, and that's all right. That I was asked to sit on a panel at uh, the commercial vehicle show in Birmingham... <laughs> Which was chaired by the lovely Quentin Wilson. I was looking forward to it. I, I was going to say, I had the guy. special parking permit tickets on my desk. They're bright yellow. It's not something you can sort of ignore. But it wasn't that I was doing something else or it clashed with something else or that I needed to do something. I totally forgot. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't in my diary. And so it was a very, you, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's, um, it's heart dropping. That moment, it, well, it's where a you horrible you moment. Be in a different yeah. city. I was all relaxed. I was putting my boots on to go out for a nice walk, <laughs> and the phone rang, and it was lovely Oliver from Ford, and he said, "Are you having trouble finding somewhere to park?" Oh. Assuming, assuming, as any intelligent person would, that I was, you know, outside on something, uh, and I didn't even know what he was talking about. I said, "What do you mean park?" Well, don't, you know, when it dawned on me, it was a horrible moment. What but did you do, seriously? What did you do? I just apologised profusely. and What, and didn't go? There, I couldn't go. By then, I would have got there just as they finished. It was a very early morning thing. But oh. what I then heard since was that, if anything, the panel was more successful because I wasn't there. Oh, really? <laughs> well, it was fine. And Quentin is a professional. He would have covered it beautifully. Quentin's good. He's, yeah. a, he's a top, top guy. Yeah. And so it wasn't a... Um, it doesn't seem to have... have anyway. I'm very, I'm very sorry that I didn't do that. I think, I think what this is, this is where we say you have to learn from your mistakes, isn't it? Yeah, but is, at, my, at, at my, at my age, with a string of mistakes going back forty-five <laughs> years, it's really little excuse. What, it, what I have discovered is that the, the wonderful advantage and privilege of having an agent, because this was just me agreeing. This is, I was asked if I could do it in, in, uh, in Amsterdam, and I went, yeah, yeah, yeah of course I can. And you know, if my and I didn't do it through my agents, and because uh, she doesn't let me forget, I get did, a lot. Did of you do you have messages. a physical diary? Uh, um, no, like well, I have a no, I have a, di- a, a digital a digital diary on my phone and computer, but it's not it's not in there because I didn't put it in. Oh, okay. So there was you nothing in my diary. So normally it. I put stuff in my diary, and so I do. I actually do occasionally turn up to events I'm invited to. <laughs> I think on the whole you're good. On the there's whole, lot, I'm good. There's a lot yeah. going on in in that head of yours. Oh God, don't even isn't start. there? Yeah, mostly nonsense, but yeah, no, there is. You, now you've apologised about Tesla. Um, today, May the first. Yeah. The old uh, UK order books open for Model Three. UK order books, and they're saying deliveries in June, which is next month. Which is next month. Which well, is I, I like think four this, weeks. Was, yeah, but it's for specific models. So it's the performance model and the long range model i think it's the basically the expensive ones as always with tesla yes are, well and, and a lot of a lot on. of people do that the launch model is always the yeah. higher ranking thing yeah. or a special edition that you pay more for yeah. but um so yeah you uh, the entry level will have to wait the standard range plus as they call it will have to wait a little bit longer for and that will start yeah. at 38 grand 38900 pounds yes yes and there's because that's what's been going on is the well I mean I've kind of always assumed it would be around 40 grand yeah late you know, th- I did really. th- sort of at best mid 30s yeah but, I mean it might get yeah. down to sort of yeah the, the 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 cheapest version which will be the is that there's a standard range rear wheel drive isn't it I think mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is I think thirty nine thousand dollars and I reckon that'll be probably around the same in pounds you know, yeah, it'll I've, be sub I've, sub forty thousand. I've yeah. got it here. Yeah, it's standard range plus, which is the hundred and forty uh, miles an hour, five point three seconds to sixty, two hundred and fifty eight miles estimated. WLTP, estimated, not confirmed. Mm-hmm. No, and um, uh, with the uh, rear wheel drive and the um, yeah, that car is <clears throat> that car is the entry level, sixteen hundred and forty five kilos in weight. Next to that is the long-range all-wheel drive. I know we've talked about this before, but there's so many specs. I like to repeat these things because it helps me to revise. Yes. <laughs> if I say it over and over again, it goes in eventually. <laughs> and then you've got the middle. Then you've got the middle uh, model three, the long-range all-wheel drive. Yeah. Four point 
five seconds to 60, 145 miles an hour top speed, so five mile an hour top uh, more than the standard range plus, which means nothing. 348 mile WLTP confirmed. Right. 47,000. So say that one again. How many miles? What's the range? Three? 348 miles confirmed. Wow. Wow. 258 miles estimated for the standard range plus. Right. You're pretty much paying uh, 10 grand or nine and a bit grand more. More, right. For the long range all wheel drive. Yeah. Um, Of course, it's dual motor. um, Same warranty, you know, four year warranty and battery. Eight year warranty. Yeah. It's 1847 kilos versus 1645. Oh, so kilos. it's quite a, yeah, a chunky bit more heavy, isn't it? It yeah. is a so chunky a, bit heavier. Well, it's obviously a bigger battery, isn't it? It's got to be. I mean, there's no it's, other. It, it, <laughs> exactly. Unless there's some, unless Elon has been doing some unbelievable witchcraft. <laughs> Uh, which yeah. he might I don't know yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, get involved in his tell. business but that's because um, it is interesting that you know most other manufacturers w- w- announce the this, this, the kilowatt hours of their batteries quite early on in their sort of specs free, freely yeah there's no None mention here. of that in there no no this is all the, the stuff I was sent this morning yes me too I've seen um, all this yeah, yeah. yeah and um the boot space remains the same. You probably know this for the yeah. uh, for, for for all the cars, and then the Model Three Performance, which is the flagship one, which is big, the one I drove in. That's what I drove from Copenhagen you, to Oslo. Yeah, 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 it was the Performance. Yeah, which is which is super quick. Three point two seconds to sixty. Yeah, uh, one hundred and sixty two miles an hour, three hundred and twenty nine mile range. So not that far behind the long range all wheel drive. No. But, and it certainly, I mean, the re- for, it was so hard to tell on that one drive, particularly because yeah. the other thing is, I understand. You know, in my DNA, what miles are? Yes, and I, I understand in a theoretical way what a kilometer is. Yeah, and so and this was all in kilometers, obviously, so all the distances. But what was obvious was we were driving for hours and hours at <laughs> motorway speeds, <laughs> and it was in, okay. in pretty grim weather, and it was fine. You know, there was just uh, what was yeah. the ride like on the twenty? Because I think it that comes with the twenty-inch wheels. That's yeah. the only one of the three which comes with twenties. Yes, because um, I do. I mean, a lot of. Model S owners I've spoken to look at my car with envy about because of the wheels and tires. I mean, they say, and I, I have noticed that on the Model S, the ride is harder. Yeah, and you get those little lumps, like bits of grit, you can feel in the. It in picks the, up all the. the, the yeah. Whereas tiny, mine, you don't. Mine is very smooth. You don't. You've notice got taxi. If you've got taxi driver spec wheel and tire combination, Just whatever the most basic one is. I yeah, can't yeah. It. Smallest yeah, yeah. diameter, most pillowy, yeah, large yeah. diameter. That I mean. Yeah. I think that's that's what you want. Well, it is, and it's so much cheaper. I mean, the, t- yeah. the tires. If you wear, and that was the one guy who, who had a, a ludicrous hundred hundred, you know, d ludicrous that he rips his tires to bits in like five thousand miles. Yeah, <laughs> and they're really yeah. expensive. Those well, low profile tires. If cost they're a lot if they're three hundred quid a corner, you you do the maths. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's 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 it all gets a bit silly. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's anyway, the same. Yeah, so weight. I didn't notice. I didn't. I have to say, I didn't notice on the the car I drove, which did have whatever the performance tires are. Mm-hmm. Um, it, uh, I didn't notice a sort of. If anything, it was a really. I would say it was as smooth as mine. I didn't notice a sort of. Oh, that feels a bit. <sighs> I mean, it grips. It grips like I mean. Go, I it, went round one roundabout slightly faster than I would normally. <laughs> And I went. This car can go round this round about forty times faster than I can. You know, it's like yeah. it was a, the car was having no trouble. And I was going. <laughs> well, be be honest with me. Which one would you order? So the Model Three Performance, the one you drove yeah. in the UK, is going to sell for fifty six thousand nine hundred. Yeah, I wouldn't. So I wouldn't go for that. That's nine grand more than the long range four wheel drive. All wheel drive. Yeah, it's that. It's that one. The long range all wheel drive would be the my preferred choice if if I had. The choice and, to do and that's that. ten grand more than the standard yeah. range plus. But the thing is, it looks it kind of looks better value in when you jump yeah. from a standard range to a long range or wheel drive than a unless you desperately want to just squirt launch control yeah. all the time. But I can't see. Yeah, it, absolutely. I mean, I did in the whole time I drove it. I did one time where I floored it when yeah. we were getting onto a motorway, which is in the show, and and. I mean, the uh, lovely cameraman who was working, George, young lad who was working with us for the first time, was completely blown away by that because he'd never <laughs> experienced it before. But I mean, ah, uh, you broke you know, his Tesla virginity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. I popped his nice. Tesla cherry. I hate that term. It's so horrible. Oh, it's anyway. it's, it, it makes me feel grotty just yeah, saying it's horrible. it. I'm, I'm it's horrible. sorry. I apologise to yeah, all the listeners no. for 
Sorry, we didn't use any rude words, but we said pop and cherry in the same sentence, which is not yeah. Good. Um, yeah. But yeah, but I, I mean, and it is impressive, but in a sense, you know, if that was the first time I'd ever driven a Tesla, I would have been absolutely blown away. But having yeah. driven the ludicrous, you just go, it wasn't as brutally violent. As, yes, as the you know, which made me, which makes me feel nauseous and go. I didn't go dizzy <laughs> or, or vomit. Yeah, well, because we're all getting accustomed to this. Yeah. massive. It's so quick. Massive, though. I mean, it is incredibly force. quick. Yeah, yeah. but I let's know, not forget I, I, four and a half seconds is still pretty it's, good. It's still pretty good. But I mean, that's yeah. the, the the thing you appreciate is we were we were behind a truck and it was on a busy bit of motorway and then there was a gap. Yeah, and I did, and I did floor it then, and then you go, oh, that's you've got to be careful with that. So I floored it in the same way I would in mine, and it yeah. would get me past the truck comfortably quickly. This time, yeah. it like v- v- rocketed forward much faster than I wanted to, yeah. and I went, yeah. whoa, God, you know. So that's when you notice it when you're doing sort of fifty, and you get up to fifty miles an hour, and you get up to eighty miles an hour in in a breath. You know, that's that in, that acceleration did impress me. Am I allowed to? Are you are you telling everybody that that you are going to get one? Is that classified information that we have to edit out? I don't not? know. I don't know whether. To, I mean, it's likely that I will at some point this year. I'm in discussions. Oh, listen to you, <laughs> <laughs> you! Huh. What a I'm what a lovely. Oh, it's so cagey with, with the lady, the the good lady wife. Another term yes. I can't bear, and. Uh, 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 and her levels of interest in whether I get whether we get another Tesla are, are, would be hard to measure without like microscopic equipment. So she's not that bothered. <laughs> Wait, okay, so zero something's given. Yes, would you say? Uh, uh, yes, some, something like that. But then it's also a question of timing. So it, it, I yep. just don't know when the, when they will actually be. They're saying June. Yeah. Who knows? So, but it might be. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually, there is a really. I can quickly explain the very complex series of ve- vehicular changes I'm going through. So I'm going. Please uh, we're, do. Uh, we're going. We're. I'll do it as briefly as I can in bullet points. But vehicular we're, complexity. Uh, yes, there's some vehicular. So I am going to fit a vehicle to. It's, got, it's like they're referring to it as a vehicle to grid. It is effectively a vehicle to grid, but a vehicle to home charging unit, which uh, at the moment only has a Chadamo connector. Okay. It doesn't have. Uh, it doesn't have. Um, what's the, oh God? How can I not? CCS. Remember? CCS. It doesn't it's have CCS. Two. Only has Chadamo. And so I went. Oh, whoopee woo! I've got a leaf that's got Chadamo. Of course, it's not on, on my leaf. So my lovely old leaf I've had since 2011 oh. is, is going to be redistributed. I think now it, within the fully charged crew. Is it? Are you? Yeah. Is this? Hang on. Is this upcycling? Or it's being up vehicle donation cycled. So it's being side cycled for, okay. for the time being. So then I will, and it, so it's possible I will lease for a limited period a new model Nissan Leaf, forty kilowatt hour Leaf, because that can operate on the vehicle to grid units that I'm having installed. Because we're going to do a show about what that really does. So effectively, the storage capacity I have in my house once that's there, yeah. Is fifty three kilowatt hours, so that's Tesla Powerwall and Nissan Leaf. You know the potential total, which is substantial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I want to yeah. see. I just want to see. I don't know how this will work, and this is being done. Uh, I, I think probably next month we're installing this thing, but it's to see if I can do a month uh, in the UK in the summer without using any grid power and charging two cars. You know, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Charging two car- wow, and and two big battery cars too, and two big battery cars. Yeah, so I mean, but you, I mean, I've been doing that. I've been do- ma- manually doing this for quite some time. Where, uh, you know, my my the power wall battery is nearly full. It's a sunny day. I plug in either the Tesla or the Kona, and I set them for lower, particularly on the Tesla. It's really easy, l- lower draw. Yep. And then for the rest of the day, it's charging the Tesla a bit slower than you normally would. And it's not draining the battery too much, and the, it's coming from so. And so you use zero grid power. So I might That's, only do it for three or four hours in the afternoon or something, but it adds forty, fifty miles. Yeah. To the car, but you want that, this to all be fully autonomous, you know this. Well, yeah. So that is yeah. possible now. Obviously, Zappy charger is brilliant for that. So exactly, yesterday, exactly, yesterday yeah. I wasn't here. Uh, I was in. Uh, I was working away. The it was sunny. The battery was nearly full when I left. I plugged in the leaf to the Zappy. I went, yep. oh, I, I, you know, and then I drove, and I came back, and I kind of didn't think about it. And when I got in the leaf this morning, it was full. 
I didn't do anything. So it, hang on, was, how often? How often do you use the elderly leaf? Oh, I, I use it pretty much every day when I'm working here because to go to the shops, to go go to the gym like I did this morning. Say to, what? Yeah, say just what? To, to pump some aluminium. <laughs> What about pumping think, composites? Nobody actually, talks about that. Yeah, we should pump composites. Actually, the gym I go to has these brilliant weights that look vast. It looks like, you know, Schwarzenegger's <laughs> specials, but they're not actually that heavy. They're just like big plastic. <laughs> so, oh, I, yeah, I've seen those to make you feel better about yourself. Yeah, so I was doing bench presses on what looked like I was pressing like 250 kilos, and I was actually pressing 10. <laughs> it's, I think they're the ones, you know, because gym selfies have become very popular. I um, don't do that. App- apparently, it's <laughs> yeah. not, I don't take my phone to the gym. I don't want anyone to see me at the gym. No, but um, I think they're quite popular with those because obviously they make you look good. These big yeah. grey slabs yeah. of yeah. plastic those slash ones. metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was no, I was actually I was what was I press? I did. I made a note. So twenty forty fifty five fifty five kilos. I was bench pressing. Were you three sets of twelve? That's a lot. That sounds like a lot. But then if you did a push-up, you know, like a press-up like they did in the army in 1957, your your upper body weight's got to be close to that. Well, it depends on your build, I suppose. But, you know, so it's not like ridiculous. It's not like I'm lifting up the back of a car. No, but flo- I mean, you, your own body weight exercises still remain one of, one of the hardest yeah. things, contrary yes. to belief of many. Yeah, yeah. If you just sit in a lonely hotel room, there's an amazing amount of things you can do on your own. And I don't, before anybody writes in, I don't mean that because mean, we're all adults. You can do cr- you can do your crunches. Uh, the one I love, the one I love doing. We shouldn't be talking about the gym, but there's, it's a no. very low. It's a low energy thing because it's got no electricity. It's not a running machine. Is the side uh, pulley thing that you do your core with? I've really. That's the one thing I've actually. First time ever when I've gone to a gym, I've gone. Oh my god, that's actually made a difference. I don't a know how side to describe pulley it. Thing. So you have both. You hold a handle with both hands, and you're pulling sideways. Oh and yes, you, and you twist. So it's yes. your core thing. And I've got. I've had less backache, and I haven't got a chiselled set of abs. But there's a tiny little dint in the blubber. <laughs> Listen, you've Which, got how many weeks until fully charged live? Yeah, I've got a. I've got to absolutely. I I've think got to be ripped. I, and you need to be. You need to be shredded for that, or whatever they call it. <laughs> Yeah, bodily shredded. I need to be totally shredded for fully charged yeah. life, which we, which is we had a long talk about fully charged life yesterday, and I went to a meeting last week. Oh my god, I just want people to appreciate what we've done because it is amazing, and and I can now you know when if there's any doubt that we're doing it for the money, I want to squash that now. The test drives are the most phenomenally complex thing to organise. Because of insurance and stuff? It's, and it's partly that, but logistics. it's just the, the logistics of it, of getting yeah. as many test drives in a day as possible and how long it will take. You introduce the people to the driver that goes with them. They sit in the car. They learn how to start the car. Da, da, then they go out on a track, which has, you know, so they're on the stow circuit. Yeah. 60 mile an hour top speed limit, which yeah. I think is good because it's not a race. No, it's a test drive, not a hot lap, as it yeah, were. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then how many cars are one of the great things I think which was really good is when they worked out because we'd been very anxious about oh my god they'll need to be charging them all the time they don't <laughs> oh what because they're only going like well, they're four doing miles four, four or five miles on each run and yeah. and you can't you know they can't physically just constantly do four or five they'll, they'll be not driving for as long as they're driving yeah because yeah. there's more than one car obviously there's, so I don't know how many cars are going to be there but a lot uh, and I so think it's then, good. I think if, if it was, as soon as people, uh, as soon as we give them instructions to, it'd be great to be able to get people booked. Well, on, yeah, that's on their the, test drives. So I know, but what we're doing for that is and this is all, nothing to do with me. So don't be angry with me. But we we can't do the, the just the logistical complexity of pre-booking everyone before the event is too difficult. So the Patreon supporters can pre-book. So it's a kind of limited number of people can pre-book, okay. and everyone else okay. books on the day because it's there's so because it's not just like do a test drive which car. So yeah. there's I I Pace Leaf Zoe uh, I three uh, yeah. I3, um, uh, Kia, E Nero E Nero yeah and possibly more. I I believe there are, and there could be some demonstrations of more. 
Yes. Oh, oh, God. I mean, in terms of what's on display, it's off the scale. I mean, that is amazing. So every single possible commercially available electric car will be there, but they're not all being test-driven. Yeah. Oh, anyway, before yeah, no, I forget and we move on to yeah. something else, I just want to put a call out to the public. Yeah. I have an idea for your elderly leaf. Right. And I, I want, if there's any vehicle uh, vinyl wrapping companies listening oh i have an idea for vinyl wrap for your car but i Ooh. want it to remain a surprise okay if you're interested in do- getting involved in doing a wrap please get in touch with the show um via email I'm, i've got to remember my email i think it's johnny at fully charged show dot co dot uk it is johnny is but right? you might get you might get quite a lot of emails now uh okay well anyway that's but they'll all be loving address. and supportive Damn it! Don't don't troll me. Um, if if you can, please get in touch. I've got I've got an idea which I think could be could be quite fun. And if you can do it, we can maybe get it on display at fully charged live. It will hopefully be worth it. Oh, That's all I'm saying. That's it. That's good. That's good. Um, I like that public announcement. Yeah, and it's it, uh, there's a bit of jeopardy there, Bobby, because you is. don't know what I'm thinking. No, I don't. And it's no, your I car. I've got no idea. No. <laughs> right. Um, um, right. Yeah, there's got to be another. St- hang on, I'm just I'm actually googling something, but it's very relevant. Irrelevant? No, right, very relevant. Oh, very relevant. It's like legal right, and illegal. Sure They're too close for one another, and they mean such different things. They do mean they do tend to mean quite different things. They do, don't they? And it's annoying. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, customers can now reserve the all new Peugeot yes. um, E208. Yes, that's I did. Yeah, um, that which the, the order books have opened, as they say. I don't know if there is a. I'd love it if there was a big dusty book. You know, like the ones you get from Wizard yeah. films. Yeah, or yes, where they in reach like, it down. Like in, um, in um, what's his name? Uh, Harry Potter or something. Harry I Potter. Know. I want Some a very of... small, very small human being with a very long beard sitting at a very high desk with yes. a huge book and a feather feather quill. 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 Uh, I'd like to order my new E two eight. Yes, I can do that for you. Dip, dip, dip in the ink. <laughs> Scritty, scrit on parchment. I don't oh. want paper. I want parchment. <laughs> oh, I, I want. What's the Egyptian stuff that predates that? Um, oh yeah, papyrus. Made out of pa- papyrus. Papyrus. Yes, it's something like. Yes, a scroll, a papyrus scroll. Actually, I quite like an Egyptian. In fact, <laughs> just I'm an looking Egyptian. for the car company that takes orders where there's a guy with a great big stone slab and a chisel and a little oh. round one of those round hammers and he he and he writes it in runes. Oh. Could you could hang on? Could you could Tesla whittle you a car contract onto a a, a, a piece of a plank of wood? A plank of Sustainable, wood, obviously, yeah. fast yeah. growing bamboo, for fast example. Growing. Yeah, um, yeah, Why? just keep keep it real. <laughs> How do we go down these rat holes? I don't know, but anyway, no. But that is quite. I mean, I think this is so. There's been this enormously. I can't even look at it. I can see it's going past now. Uh, complex discussion on my twitter feed about the cost of new cars because of the tesla announcement today and there's a lot of people yeah. saying and i absolutely understand it you know this is it is to people's car it's, it's not, not an affordable much, car it's not an affordable car it's really expensive which is, i think is absolutely true but i did point out on twitter that i didn't buy a new car or, or take possession of a new car until i was in my late 40s yeah because who buys and i you know I didn't, and I, none of my friends did i didn't know people who bought new cars you buy a second-hand car because they're really expensive things, you know, and it's crazy. This is true, but also, uh, yeah, I bought my first um, new car last year. Right. But um, the other thing is when you do buy, the word buy is critical yes, here. Is, Are you yeah. buying it? Because obviously everything's on, on lease. All the clever yeah. money is, you know, uh, some sort of contract hire, yeah. um, you know, HP. So actually, very few people... I either own the, their car or want to own their car. Yeah, yeah. And that's the future of ownership for many people. So yeah. what annoys me is when people go, oh, you know, 30, 30 grand car. I want an electric car to be sub 18 grand and then it's affordable. It's like, but you're not, most people aren't paying 30 grand in cash no. across the table when they no. buy the car. They're paying no. 310 pounds a month or whatever it might yeah. be with a yeah. grand down at the start. And there's many combinations of that depending on what finance deal you get. So really... Yeah. What is it? What is affordable? 
Because yeah. I know I know people that are sitting in Porsches and they can't really afford the Porsche. Yeah, they, yeah. They can afford four hundred pounds a month, and they really wanted that Porsche. So therefore, they're sitting in a Porsche and they're driving it for the yeah. next three years. So, actually, even that you're right because even when I did buy it, my first new car, well, I'm just trying to make sure I got. It. Yeah, that was it. That was the first brand new car that I drove out of a showroom in. Was, was this the v, Golf? Was a Golf, uh, not the R32. It was the VR6. Mm. And actually, to be honest, that was the best golf I ever had because you, it wasn't. You bought a box fresh VR6. A box fresh, when it had flowers in the back, they were so thrilled to sell it. They go, they put a big bunch of flowers, <laughs> and I think they may have used a term. We put something in the back, sir, for the lady wife. No, I they didn't. It's say not that. impossible. They would have said that. I'm pretty sure that they didn't sell the VR6 in the late seventies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they but, were still living in the late seventies. The lady way. But that was—I mm. did love that car because it was like a Jag in terms of its. In, it was very nicely fitted out in its interior. It was. It was quite roomy in the back still, and it was. You know, it had room because it was a what three point two litre V six. Yeah, it was a proper Luxo, V6. proper Luxo. Um, yeah, golf. but it wasn't sort of too racy and hard. It was comfortable, and it was you know it was good. I mean, it was yeah, absurdly. Yeah. Thirsty, thirsty because then i traded that in for an r32 which was just silly yeah that was when i was doing scrap heap and that was that was the what that was my final petrol head stupidity you know that was like, your, your your final flurry of, of petrol yeah. performance wasn't it really yeah and i traded that in for a prius which all which my... is still it still amazes me you climb <laughs> this what's a big job you climb this mountain of chest wig and performance and then you basically <laughs> just jumped off the top of the hill yeah. into a Toyota showroom. It's amazing. Yeah. It was, that was but yeah, a, I admire it. I really admire but that it. Was, that was a genuine quote. I've never forgotten that. The, the salesman at the, at the Toyota showroom, as my R32 was driven away by an engineer and a Prius turned up in its place, did actually say, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> Is that what he said? Only, yeah, must be the only time in his career he's ever said that, you know. Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't quite believe it. I, um... Yeah. I've been getting a lot of people on social media in the last couple of days talking about are electric cars because of their skateboard platform setup. Are we going to see a, a sort of very generic a drivetrain and feel of electric yeah. cars and and then returning to this idea of coach building? Because you know, I was at VW last week and with the news that they're going to sell their um, MEB platform to Ford, I think, and they're right. they're open to sell it to other people, other manufacturers. Yeah. This does beg the question of like, do we are we going to care less about the underpinnings and more about a bespoke body shell? Yeah, yeah, because you could do such, you know, at the moment we're not seeing anything that radical. I mean, I think no. the problem we're going to have is you go because you go why you don't need a bonnet. No, Why, I want to sit right at the front in the bubble, but then you go, oh yeah, there's the safety issue. There's the crashing bit with your you ankles. You want a bit of a crumple zone. Yeah, yeah. you don't want a forward control comma van, although no. it would look great, but you just yeah. have to re repackage the seating position versus the front of the van. Yeah, yeah. But it would be but great, it, wouldn't it? You, you you say, I want a Scooby-Doo mystery machine type of body shell Yes. on a, on a Tesla Model 3 skateboard. Skateboard, yeah. Boom, no, done. Do all sorts of things. I mean, in a way, it might be even more fun to do the extreme other version you know because i've always liked that sort of volkswagen camper you know where you're sitting right at the front and you've got a steering wheel that's that's vertical and you have yes. to, you know that kind of look horizontal is great. horizontal whatever it is yes. up yeah up, you rest your up, elbows up. on it when you're driving yeah, yeah yeah but then on the other hand you could do it so that you're sitting right at the back and you have an enormous long bonnet that is completely pointless that's a bloody brilliant <laughs> idea yeah but you'd like have a load of storage dragster. Your frunk would be enormous. You know, you could actually get people in it. You could put a cough. I want a frunk long enough for a coffin. Well, hang, hang on. All the passengers in the car would be in front of you. Well, no, no. You, it would only, no, this is a two-seater. This oh, is it's a, a, a pure sports car. A pure yeah. sports car. But it just has, you're right at the very back, and it has this enormous thing at the front in front of you. Hang on a minute. Are, yeah. we, are we inadvertently inventing EV wacky races? Well, I so mean, you're, it would be. You're reinventing yeah. wacky races but with electric propulsion. So it, it opens this ridiculous Pandora's box of creativity. Yeah. It would be, I mean, it would be, you know, in a glorious alternative uh, universe, there will be, uh, the fully charged show will have this vast $50 billion a year budget and they will be doing wacky races where, where they get teams to build amazing bodyworks on all the same 
you know, skateboard. Oh, you get given a, pl- a skateboard two months given, before the show. Yeah, and you like build they the do at SEMA, and you have to build a show vehicle, and then they yeah. all get displayed together, and everyone gets yeah. to. And you do a road trip in them. Oh. Yeah. Because, I mean, you could have, you know, like standing desks. I was in an office the other day. with standing. Well, why have I got to sit down to drive? <laughs> what oh, stand standing. Up? Well, who are you, like Ryanair motoring? <laughs> what? Crikey. But if you stood up, you could get a load of people in, the driver's standing. Uh, I mean, you'd have a safety belts. I'm not saying just rattling around. You'd be strapped to a post. Well, what, what about those specialist back chairs off of the 80s? Oh, yeah. Where you sit kneeling down oh, that's right oh they were do you remember so those comfortable yes those i mean they're I something that doctors one. always had in the 80s yeah they hurt my knees they, D- were, all your weights on your knees it's, i can't you know, remember what they felt like i might have to buy yeah. one uh, to for, for the first minute you go oh this is the answer to all furniture <laughs> and then about a minute and a half and you go my knees hurt and then about 10 minutes later you can't stand up without the help of young people <laughs> supporting maybe you. imagine a back chair but with a three-point belt <laughs> over the top yeah <laughs> boom um, done but anyway that but that is good that the so ah no back to ha- car prices it yeah it's those things where you know the I've, I've always because it's a tesla i always knew it was going to be expensive you know when people went oh it's an affordable car I went no it's not going to be you know that side of it but the things i'm excited about peugeot e208 yeah the vw you've just seen i'm very very excited to hear more about that i know we can't talk about it just yet we're not allowed we're not allowed to no but basically but, I, again it depends on what people's idea of affordability is but that's going to be early 30s i would yeah. say yeah well if you're and if you're doing a higher purchase or a lease of that car the yeah. monthly payments are going to be much more same with the honda yeah you know that there yeah. are going to be reasonably priced per month options available yes. to people and then there is, of course, there is second-hand. You know, someone said, oh, I wish there were second-hand cars. Well, I just sent him a list of all the people we know that are doing... I said, there are second-hand cars. You know, I, there's three Nissan Leafs for sale in Cheltenham at this very moment. I saw them the other day. Oh, yeah, there's, there's tons of specialists. Yeah. We, meet, we meet them all yeah. the time, don't we? There's, and we're, um, now, and yeah. we're now in production. We've got, we've been doing research, Johnny, into uh, the special that we're doing on second-hand EVs for fully charged. Brilliant. There's it's research I've, taking place. I'm yeah, we very need to passionate yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, and there's got obviously in the next you know two or three years there's going to be a lot of very reasonable and we now know long lasting uh, second hand electric cars coming onto the market because there will be more and more. Um, the thing I wanted to quickly mention because what I'm going to do because you don't you, you don't know about this Johnny but what I'm going to do is uh, when I was in uh, Paris recently I met some amazing proper influential people that I managed <laughs> to interview so I'm going to play one of the interviews in this episode. Okay in a moment I'm going to go quiet in a minute then yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay I'll just sit and listen but the one the one story I did love because I just think this is so important and it's Aviva a who are uh, car insurance aren't they or insurance they, company yes they are a, in their, insurance in their broker. Norwich uh, head office uh, over their car park it already existed it's not greenfield it's, it was already there it was a great big tarmac car park for their staff to park at the car they've put 608 kilowatts of solar panels sh- uh, shading over their car massive. park i'm actually is, I'm, I'm just looking at an aerial view photograph yeah. well that's and what all big buildings that have got car parks should be like that you know complete, I mean, uh, completely completely yeah well not only that it's great because obviously if the sun is shining it means your car's not getting so hot it's not getting so hot inside yeah um and if it's if it's if it's sort of bright but raining and stuff yeah so it's still generating some solar your car's not getting so wet and yeah. dirty i'm 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 all for no, that it's, it's so obvious isn't it and i mean it's, it is interesting now because of the it's just a reflection of the cost of installing that you know f- yeah even say five years ago it would have been it wouldn't have made economic sense you might yeah. have wanted to do it as a sort of statement but it would have been that whereas this now it i mean they are they, that uh at peak generation capacity 91 percent of the energy generated from the panels would be used by their offices which means wow they you know imagine i mean when you run an office like that in fact you know it is hundreds of thousands of pounds a year what for the electricity bill for, for the electricity bill yeah, com- so completely. if you're reducing that to to in the you know over the say four three or four months of the summer you're reducing that to basically zero yeah well you you're might s- and it might help you to stop using gas if you are yeah for example yeah, yeah. but that, i can't I believe was, i can't believe uh, how many i did i know they're a big company they're the artists formerly known as norwich union aren't yes they? 
They um, <laughs> they because what... <laughs> I keep. Uh, yeah. uh, hence the Norwich based. Yeah, uh, it's they've they've got a uh, a thousand employees. Yeah, so it's a big office. It's not that's a, a lot of shed, people, is it? Yeah, that's a lot of people. Eighteen hundred and seventy-two yeah. um, solar panels. Yeah, eighteen hundred and seventy-two crumbs. That's a lot, isn't it? That is I a work, lot. And when I see their annual uh, generating capacity, five hundred and forty-two thousand kilowatt hours. Well, it's f- fifty-four megawatts, isn't it? Or I want I know, some of that. Yeah. Give me some of that. Aviva. Give me some of that. <laughs> yeah. Come on. But I, I was having a talk with a, a, a nearby neighbour of ours who owns a big industrial estate uh, in, in uh, Gloucestershire, and he's putting solar on the roofs of all those buildings at the Cle- moment. Clever, clever guy. And that is not quite to this scale, but it's a lot. You know, it's something like, you know, it's a thousand panels or something like that in total. Over, And he was, and they're just doing all the kind of maths of what that means because some of the industrial units are used to store medical equipment but not drug not drugs it's like um uh you know hip oh they they manufacture things like hip replacement doobries and right i okay. don't know yeah and it has but they have to be they're all made of special materials they have to be maintained at this not uh, sort of frozen but at a low temperature between five and 15 degrees well that uses a huge amount i mean their annual oh, electricity bill for that whole thing air conditioning so their annual electricity bill for this site which i think is 20 industrial units is in the many hundreds of thousands of pounds a year you could oh kind of forget because we're all used to domestic use but yeah. this industrial use is huge and, and also those buildings are boring there's loads of flat roofs yeah they're all generic yeah, warehousing yeah, buildings you're, corrugated yeah. metal and they're, they're the ones past. that should be clad yeah exactly I've, I've raved about this for years you're not going to drive past that and go oh look they've ruined those lovely warehouses with solar panels <laughs> quite <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to say that <laughs> quite yeah. so that, I just thought that was worth mentioning I just love I love a good solar car I love it does, does anybody sell does anybody sell um, solar car ports in this country to like you know individuals for, yeah, I as in if you just wanted so. one for yeah. your house. Yeah, I think so because I want to put one up here, but it's because uh, you can't where board. you where you live, you've got a good area which gets a lot of sun, haven't you? Which you could well, which could yeah, capture, there, there are capture. so there are. There's a lot of people. I've just googled it, and there is a great deal of people who, who do it. I, I could uh, I could foresee a lovely some lovely grapevines going up either side of it. Yes, like a pergola. Or solar a pergola. Carport. So there's GB Sol who do solar carports from like big industrial ones like Aviva use to individual household ones. I know GB Sol. I'm pretty yeah. sure I did a mixing session with him in about 1994. <laughs> it was very good. Um, well, come on the I... stage, please. GB Sol. <laughs> yeah, it was messy weekend in Ibiza, I believe. All right. Uh, early 90s. But they do, yeah, they do a lot of solar carports with a nice, they do from like modern metal ones to nice wooden ones that you could put in your garden. Yeah, oh, so, like yeah, trad ones yeah. for trad houses. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, if you've got the space in your house and you don't have suitable roof areas yeah. on yeah. your actual house, so you could, that's a, a very good alternative. That, And they're not, uh, pr- I mean, there's one, there is one here for, uh, they're kind of about a grand, there's, they're about a thousand pounds. There's What? There's a, that seems it, quite cheap. Yeah, there's an aluminium, plain aluminium carport, which could have, oh, it's not that big, can have four panels on it, is 600 quid. So there's a okay, bigger you one can, that's you can link them together or you can, yeah. okay. Yeah, and there are some, ve- ve- oh yeah, there's uh, uh, only cause, carport. Only because my wife doesn't like parking cars in garages because the next morning they've only got to come back out again. So it almost, yeah. she sees it as being a bit pointless. Yes, I can, I can understand so, that. So the carport is is a good... Yes, uh, if you just drive it contra- in. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Not contrast. What's the word? Uh, uh, compromise. 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 That's what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Chamon. <laughs> right. <laughs> but let's go. Now let's go to, I'm just going to explain who this is. So I went to Paris to the Formula E race, which was quite fun in the sense that the weather was so, I, I was there two years ago and it was really hot and sunny and lovely and it was all, and I had a glass of wine and I sat and watched the Formula E in a Paris street and it was all rather nice. This year it was raining, cold. <laughs> but anyway, while I was there, there was a, uh, it was, I was there with Virgin Racing and uh, uh, who won. They were very happy. Oh. They won the race because there was a point where pretty, <clears throat> pretty much 
half the cars on the track were just suddenly in a sort of gentle pile in one corner. They all just went, because <laughs> it was so wet and slippery. Also known just, as a crash. Yeah. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't like a violent crash. They just sort of slowly slid into each other and lots of bits of bodywork were hanging off. But yeah. there was this sound then for, when they all started. They, they carried on and they were driving around. And it's that weird thing where you, if it was internal combustion, you'd never hear it because it's electric. What you can hear is if you can imagine one of your children when they were about three dragging an empty plastic toy box <laughs> over over stones <laughs> that was the noise that was it, it so, sounded like i can't i can't basically it, is lots of chafing <laughs> lots and lots there's just mass of motorsport chafing but it was it was very specific sound that comes when you drag along incredibly expensive uh, you know carbon fiber <laughs> But edge edge down, so it's not yes. like a flat sheet. It's not that sound. It's the, it's the edge going. So the oh, front this- was hanging off one, the back was hanging off another. There was bits. Every time they went past, they were all the marshals ran out and just picked up lots of incredibly expensive rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> there was bits of plastic everywhere. It was just catastrophic. Yeah. I'm but looking anyway. forward to seeing the old Jaguar E Trophy as well. Actually, the support well, race. It, yeah, that, I mean that was they were doing that there, and it was. They go, they go so. I mean, they go so fast, and you can only see about fifty meters of track at any one place. Yeah. So you you're sitting there, and you can hear birdsong and and French people discussing. Uh, I don't know what. Oh, so many things to discuss. A lot of things. Philosophy. So many. So you things can hear, uh, and that's the other side of the track. You hear people. Jean Paul Sartre. Je ne sais pas. And then you hear. <laughs> and that's that. Those are the jag eye paces came past, and then you hear. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. But anyway, while I was there in the morning, there was a a, a, a kind of panel discussion about the, uh, climate change, about uh, low carbon energy generation, the future of transport, all that stuff in uh, which uh, Virgin Racing organised. And one of the speakers was Christina Fugueres. Christiana, I got her name wrong. Christiana, but you Figueres. corrected it. You're all right. Yeah, you don't uh, need weirdly, to apologise. I, I got Figueres right, <laughs> but I got Christiana wrong. Anyway, amazing woman who was a uh, she's a, a, dip, a Costa Rican diplomat. Okay, uh, uh, and she was absolutely the driving force behind the Paris Climate Agreement. So she wow. okay. and she was with the UN. So she was a, um, ex- a executive secretary of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Well, that's that's so big, quite high powered. And so she spent the six years between the disaster that happened in Copenhagen, which was meant to be what Paris did, was meant to be the agreement between all the companies in the all the countries and companies in the world to reduce uh, carbon emissions, and it was a total disaster. And then she worked for the next six years all over the world trying to talk people into it, and which eventually ended up with the Paris Climate Agreement, which everyone except Donald Trump is now following and is struggling to do what they what they uh, what they do. But she an amazing woman, and uh, after she corrected my mispronunciation of her name, was delightful. <laughs> and so here is Christiana Figueres. Cristiana Figueres. Yes. Uh, I come from the wild and wonderful and tiny little country of Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I had the pleasure to take over the international climate negotiations in June of 2010, which was six months after the Copenhagen right. debacle. Yes. Uh, and basically, the then uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki Moon, basically hired me and said, pick up the pieces from the garbage can and see what you can do. Right. Um, and I had the pleasure of working with all governments toward a global agreement that eventually became the Paris Agreement over six years. And it was a right. six-year process of reconstructing trust among themselves, reconstructing the process, reconstructing our very thinking around the possibility that we would ever be able to have a global agreement. Uh, and that was a six-year process, but with a very good result. Yes, I know. I mean, it was because I remember friends of mine coming back from Copenhagen, like in despair, 
Yeah, yeah morning, in morning. In morning. People yeah. were wearing black. <laughs> yeah, no, and there were tears, and it was, and it was like, it, it was, was terrible. Hopeless. It was. And then the difference between that, so that six year, and it must be, I mean, because you're dealing with so many bodies, I mean, so many governments, so many companies, so, All governments so much of the resistance. world, yeah, yeah. most, gover most co uh, companies, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was uh, definitely uh, quite, quite, quite a few balls in the air at the yeah. same time. I mean, do you feel now that, because I, there's a, I have a strong feeling, and it may be based on my own biases, but that, there, there, there is resistance to it. There is climate change denial. There are governments that are going, I don't even want to talk about them, but are going, it's nonsense, let's carry on digging up more coal. I've just come back from Australia. <laughs> they love coal, the government though. But the, the, well, the, but hold on. There's a very important election coming up in there Australia. There is. Yes. And there are four female candidates, all of whom are actually, you know, ensuring that climate change it's, is on, is on the, the, on the, agenda. On, on the yeah. agenda. Um, and they're doing a brilliant job, yeah. right? No, and I, I agree. think, I think climate finally, the proverbial ten-year climate wars of Australia are about to be over. Right. Right. Uh, and which you know, could so explain the panic that's setting in yes, on the opposition. Yes. Yes. But I mean, uh, what feels it feels to me is the overriding drive doesn't matter what they say doesn't matter if they keep saying coal is wonderful because it's too expensive and it's it's right. too inefficient and it doesn't work and there's right. technologies that have overtaken it and in a sense yeah. they can shout about it all they like they're just shouting it into yeah, the yeah, wind. yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a little. I, I recently saw a fantastic cartoon that um, that summarizes this, and it was a cartoon of a thousand candles standing around, trying to put the noose around an electric light bulb. Um, <laughs> Oh, I haven't seen that. And what a brilliant know, image. And I thought, well, that's exactly where yeah. we are. That's yeah. exactly where we are. You cannot stop the advance of technology. No. We are definitely moving toward, well, here and specifically toward electric mobility. We're definitely moving toward renewable energy. It is completely unstoppable. Yeah. The path toward decarbonizing the global economy is irreversible. Yeah. The only question is, how fast is it going to go? That's yeah. the only question that is left. Yes. But it's not, are we going to, you know, do it? It yeah. is totally unstoppable. It's irreversible. The only question is how fast. But that's an important question. Yeah. It's a really important question because in this case, it does matter how fast this yes. occurs. Yeah. Because if we delay too much, we will actually close the door on the 1.5 yeah. degrees as being the maximum temperature rise that we can allow. And then we're actually opening the door to tipping points in the atmosphere and around us that are completely unpredictable yeah. and very unmanageable. Yeah. I mean, I certainly think that is a, it is a term that I'm starting to try and use more and more, which is, it's not about saving the planet, because as someone mentions, the planet will be fine. Totally. You know, but it's about saving the human race. It's about us saving ourselves yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the animals that we rely yeah. on and everything I was else. recently invited to a very fantastic birthday party, 4.5 billion years of the Earth. Right. Um, and the point of that event was to underline exactly what you say. She has been around for 4.4.5 billion years in many different forms, yeah. right? Many different forms. And she will continue in many different forms. The point is that humanity as we know it today, I mean, obviously there were Homo sapiens, but humanity, civilization as we know it today, is only 6,000 years. Yeah. Yeah. That is like, you know, half a blink of an eye yeah. in that 4.5 million. And so, and 4.5 billion. And so the, the question is, do we want to continue to preserve and, and nurture the sweet spot that we have in the atmospheric conditions that the yeah. planet has given us at this point in the evolution of the planet yeah. so that we as one of the species on the planet can continue to thrive? That's the question. Yeah. And if we're interested, then we better get our mind to it. And if we're not interested, fine. Yeah. Do business as usual and we will be temporary. Yes. <laughs> That's the question. That's the question. You've got it. You've nailed it in one. Thank you very much indeed. It's really good. I mean, is that because that's we'll use this in some way. But I mean, if there, is there any other key points you'd like to make? I mean, this is an obsessively fascinated audience in terms of new technologies, renewables. I mean, well, actually, I'll ask you that because that's. I mean, are, are there any technologies that you or you've seen that are emerging that you think? Because that's the hard thing I've found in the last 10 years. You know, you'll, I'll go to a laboratory and they'll go, this is the new battery, it's amazing, it's going to be 10 times, and it doesn't quite appear, and then something yeah. else comes. I mean, have you, can you pick out, have you got that skill to pick out the ones you think that one will 
take off and well i, I think there's sort of two families of technologies right those that have already made it to what i call the first phase yeah like, which well, is solar and solar wind, and wind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that some people think are mature. I don't think they're mature no. yet. They still have a while to go, fortunately, and we will still see much more efficiency coming from them, especially when they're paired up with storage. Yes. Um, now, storage, I think, is right now where we are really uh, being delayed in yeah. the massification of renewable energy until we have storage that is reliable, that is cheap, that is easily dissem uh, dissem disseminated. Then we will still have to rely on some fossil fuels as a transition right yeah. so storage for me is my you know I wake up every morning going what's new on storage yeah, yeah, because yeah. it has to move forward yeah. right but then there are other renewable energies that will be coming so I'm actually particularly excited about marine energy yeah. because there are so many countries that don't necessarily have solar or have wind, but they do have marine. Yeah. Um, and so I'm very, very excited to see what happens there. Yeah. But they're way, way, way behind, yeah. right? I don't think we will see anything really dramatic from them um, until, I don't know, five or 10 years from yeah. now. Um, so so the, the big push right now is storage. Yes, yeah. And that is, uh, I mean, on a micro level, you know, the f I have a battery at home. I have a Tesla Power Wall, and it and, and, it and it makes an enormous difference, you know, to our electricity consumption sure. in our house. And we have electric cars, so the, and, and the kind of management of that at the moment, it's manual. It's done by me, an obsessive, but it's becoming automated. So that and it's that side of things I think makes people anxious because they go, oh, well, have I got to check if my battery is full or if the solar is or whatever. And, it, and that stuff, which is also what we're hearing about today, that software, I think that's the other key thing that I'm seeing, both in vehicles, vehicle management, transportation management. There's so much software involved in that that it's almost as big a topic as, yeah. as storage. You know, yeah. that, that, the way that cars communicate with each other, that, or with us, or, and public transport, and the energy or use car batteries those. with each other, and right? car batteries with each other, yeah. all that stuff yeah. is, that's emerging very but, fast. But you know, the other thing that we have to really talk about software. Yeah. Um, the other thing that is really important is what is the parallel process that is occurring in addition to technology, and that is the software of software, i.e., yeah. culture. Yes. You know, cultural transformation. I am incredibly excited about the fact that we have at least 1.5 million kids on the streets that we have Extinction yeah. Rebellion in the UK, because all of that, all of that civil disobedience, right, is, I think, a huge change, is a sea change in public opinion yeah. that is angry. And they are angry, justifiably angry, yeah. because they have not just understood the science of climate change, they know that we have everything that it takes. Yeah. They know that we have the technology, yeah. we have the finance, we need the policies and so that anger about not moving faster on climate change is actually in my book just as powerful as the technology yes. and marrying those two things i think is what really is going to cut through so to me the technology represents the optimistic side yeah, yeah. The anger represents the outrage, which is why yes. we have our podcast yeah, that's yeah. called Outrage uh, and Optimism. Subscribe. Because you need, this, because you need both. You do need both. You know, right. you need yeah. that anger and that impatience. Yeah. Like, let's move, yeah. let's move. And then you need the optimism that comes from the technology yeah. development. And once you bring those two together, now you have really, a, for the first time, I think, in the whole evolution of addressing climate change, you have the marriage, if you will, or the merging of two forces that are going to be really disruptive. Yeah. So I'm actually quite delighted about that. Yeah, because also I think there was an interesting point made in the discussion, not by you, I think by the, the, uh, the chair, who, who made a kind of tacit comparison between the Gilets Jaunes in Paris and the... And the completely, completely different completely things. Different. Completely so different. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. If, if for one reason, there was this huge demonstration in London for weeks, Eleven no days. violence, no violence, no damage to property, a thousand arrests, very few uh, criminal char uh, charges. Correct, like, correct. Like a dozen people yeah. have been charged, the rest have just been let go. And the police all said this is an incredibly peaceful, well-organized, yes. 
polite demonstration. Yes. It wasn't a kind no, of... No, it really was an example, up. you know, a true example of civil disobedience. You know, those people studied the tactics of uh, uh, Martin Luther King. Yeah. They studied the tactics of Gandhi. Yeah. And they really, they trained ahead of time. Right. They trained for, yeah. you know, pacifist, peaceful, protesting yeah. and demonstrations because it's not easy to do that right yeah. it's not easy to control your temper no, when you see really you know a, a uniformed authority in front of you but they trained and trained and trained yeah. because they wanted to make sure that this would be a maintained and they had they had programmed who was going to as they call themselves glue themselves yeah. Yeah. to particular points and then when they were removed by the police who else was going to come in and replace yeah. so it was very very carefully planned for months um, and and well executed right yeah. because it was tr a very very good example of civil disobedience that frankly in the course of human history has been a very important yeah. um, force of change you see it in the suffragettes in the UK yeah. you saw it in the civil rights movement of the US you saw it in the independence movement in India you saw the power of this civil disobedience yeah. Um, and now we're beginning to see civil disobedience on climate change, and I'm delighted. Right. <laughs> so, Christina, this is... Uh, Christiana. Just, Christiana, right, that's so a good start. <laughs> it, was, it was so embarrassing. I literally was doing... Just did you do? I, hang on a minute. Did you? So you didn't quite introduce her in that way that John Travolta misintroduced. <laughs> is still one of my favourite clips on television. Misintroduced. Is it Adina Menzel singing the Frozen theme tune? Let oh, it right. go. Oh right. No. What, and what did he and say? And he he at the final second before he said the amazing, the most inspirational. The he, he just added so many yeah. superlatives on, and then when it came to a name, just went totally blank. And I think it was <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, that's a horrible. That's a horrible. I can't moment. remember what it is, but I got. Um, let me Google it because he, he her name is Adina Menzel, but Travolta got it totally wrong, and it's still one of my top five funniest things. <laughs> um, I mean, I it think wasn't it was quite a, like that because I was seeing her. I was reading her name and going, "Oh, it's Christiana." I must remember that Christiana, Christiana, and then she comes over and sits with me because she's quite. You know, she gets ushered around. She's quite high powered, and I said, "Oh." Christina, no, no, thank you so much. And she, she, she was so used to it. She said, "It's Christiana." Try to say that. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you're I'm, like, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so even though I was practicing two seconds before, anyway, let's oh, listen to John. Oh, it was John Travolta. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to use the clip, are we? But it's. I, th oh, I it, think he, we can audio. Yeah. He's, he introduces her. Oh gosh, hang on a minute. I'm going to play it because it's just brilliant. There will always be a special place in my heart for the movie musical and for the songs that create their most memorable moments. Here to perform the Oscar-nominated, gorgeously empowering song, Let It Go, from the Oscar-winning animated movie, Frozen, please welcome the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazeem. Did you... <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> that is worse than I do. What is the, what is her actual name? Ad Edina Menzel, and Adina he says, Menzel. and he says, well, he just says Adela Thriller. He, <laughs> he, he doesn't really say anything. He's gotten so excited about the intro. He's obviously padded the intro out, and he's just yeah. totally lost it and dropped the ball at the final minute. Ah, oh, it still gets me. That and um, John Inverdale um, saying an extremely <laughs> rude word on live sport. Oh, right. Those are my two favourite um, well, things. Well, there was the other. The other one was Jeremy Hunt, the culture secretary. <laughs> yes, that one went wrong on the BBC. That was very funny. Did didn't it just? Didn't it just? <laughs> uh, maybe that's where, where we should end this podcast. Yeah, we, um, maybe we should. We should round it up at that point. Uh, I would like to thank Christina. Christi I can't. Oh, you're so you're, you're say, doing Christiana. a Travolta. You're doing a Travolta. I'm doing a Travolta. <laughs> I may as well get the whole. I would like to fa thank Christine Figs. <laughs> That's a slow Christiana Fugueres for uh, spending did that time with me. She was really interesting and has an amazing uh, take on everything. Obviously, Costa Rica produces a lot of incredibly bright, powerful, intelligent women because uh, Monica Araya, who I did 
uh, the Norway um, EV Nordic yes. EV summit with yeah yes yeah. from She's Costa, Costa Rica. Rican. It's the she is of course they all know each other. Christiana and, uh, and Monica are, are old pals. It's the coffee. It must be the coffee. In the, it's the, yeah. uh, because they. The, the, you know when they get educated at school and stuff they, they they're, they're drinking high quality coffee at all times yeah and it focuses their mind oh, yeah. and of course they've got lovely weather all year round they don't have winters no so they don't get down like about that. that no I yeah. think I've just I think I might have just so completely worked it all out or not maybe yeah. I should just go and sit down and be quiet for a while <laughs> there is a very good article about um, uh, Christiana Figueres on Business Green because one of the other journalists I met there was a lovely guy and I of course can't remember his name now uh, who writes for <laughs> Business Green he might have written oh I, I can remember his name his name is Michael Holder because he wrote this um, this article so what what it, this what she said is it is not even a stretch for the UK to achieve net zero emissions by 2050 it's a walk in the park it's a doddle get over it stop moaning on about how uh, how efficient your diesel is Sorry, I just have to have a, I always, if I ever get a chance to have a pop at diesels, I always do it. But you naughty man! <laughs> I know, I'm a naughty, naughty, naughty man. man. <laughs> but yeah, so that's quite. A, that's, so yeah, he was a very nice man, proper proper scientist, journalist, Michael Holdo, very nice. Liked him. Well, um, we yeah, should say enough. goodbye now. Yeah, I think. Um, Th- yes, I mean, please do. Uh, well, we certainly have a look at the old uh, link, which will be connected in some way to this wonderful podcast for Fully Charged Live if you're in the UK or any of the neighbouring European countries, because a lot of people do come from uh, over the sea and Ireland. We shouldn't yes, which that. is also over the sea. Yeah, and there's some amazing cars coming from Ireland, including oh, an yes. electric electric DeLorean. That they're so he's. I've just heard they finished it. Have they? Because I saw some yeah. pictures they were going to... I mean, I can't wait for that. The fact that it's coming from Ireland as well. It's really good. The home of DeLorean. It is the home of DeLorean. Yeah. Absolutely fabulous. It's can't, very, can't very, f- very, very fast, apparently. There's am... also that I'm not sure that uh, Richard's Ferrari, I really hope it, it will be there. We're trying to film it before it goes to its customer. But, yes. you know, the Ferrari, I'm going to say 322. Is it it's a 308? It's a 1972 Ferrari, and it's red. I think it. I thought it was 308. Maybe it is a 308. Th- uh, it looked like a 308, but mm, I yeah. don't want to be quoted. But that is it. that is now hovering towards a sub three second zero to sixty. Oh, yeah. I saw and some he, burnout images. Yes, yes. It's it's obviously a bit of a tire killer. It's a bit of a tire killer. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, I was very impressed with that. Yeah, but anyway, so that but so there's uh, yeah do do have a look at that if you uh, uh, want to come along to Fully Charged Live. It is going to be amazing. Some really good talks, including a lot of stuff about electric flight that's just been organised, and we have a pilot who flies electric planes coming to Fully Charged Live to talk about electric flight. Brilliant. Yeah among many other people. Anyway, that's all. Thanks, Johnny, for being such an absolute major, major global automotive figure. <laughs> I didn't expect you to say that, but I'll take it and run. Thank you very much, Robert. It's, it's good to chat. It's yeah, good it's to good chat. to chat. And I hope you have a brilliant time in Monaco. Quite I know, it's going to be sweet. I've got my linen jacket ready. Get your linen loafers. jacket. Mirrored shades. I'm ready. Well, you've got to wear, you've got to wear loafers with no socks. Think that's I'm gonna. Quite but good. I get very cold ankles, so mm. might have to counteract that with um, <laughs> some skin-coloured socks. <laughs> and on that note, I'm gonna go. Okay, very good. <laughs> we'll see you all soon. And if you have been, as always, thank you for listening. In the words of the greatest world showman, let's get on with this episode. I've never watched it. I've got no idea what it's about. I know it's got the bloke from Wolverine in. And that's it, really. <laughs>